I hope y'all not sleeping, so wake up. It's time for Into His Courts. I'm your man, P. Skip. I got with me my crew again, none other than T-Mac. Hola. Chili Willie. Gracias, gracias, amigo. We're going to get right into the scripture today because we got a lot to talk about, and it's going to be an absolutely amazing show. My heart is already beating. Listen, I want to talk about Zion Williamson. We just recently watched over the weekend the Duke, North Carolina, and he's back. And I have a question for y'all, but I'm going to read the scripture. We're going to go from there. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, and the Amplified says, listen closely. I have set before you today life and prosperity, good and death and adversity and evil. Drop down to verse 19, says, I call heaven and earth as a witness against you today that I have set before you life and death and blessings and cursing. Therefore, you shall choose life in order that you may live and your descendants. My question is this. First of all, I'm going to throw out this debate. As much as we got all the hype about Zion Williams, about he's the next greatest thing since sliced bread, I'm seeing this young man's game, and I'm going, okay, there's a few strikes you have against you. To me, being a guy who played the game and understands some, some of the nuances of the game, one, I believe that given the history of the school you chose, which is Duke, you had great college players that did not, their games did not translate to the pros, a.k.a. Christian Leitner, a.k.a. Tommy Amaker. You're looking at Johnny Dawkins, all these great players that did not, their games did not. The best one I believe that has come out of Duke, and the only reason why his game or his career didn't do well was because of injury, and that was Grant Hill. Other than that, you got Cherokee Park. You got all of these players that came out of Duke that were supposed to be great, that their games did not do well in the league. Where did Kyrie Irving go? Well, Kyrie Irving went to Duke. He did go to Duke. But I mean, I just want to just know where Kyrie Irving went. But let, but we still got to see. We still got to see how that's going to translate, though. Okay, all right. Okay, I just, because, I, I thought he went to again, Duke. Grant, Grant Hill started off with a great career and uh -huh. then injury. And I said Grant Hill was one of those players that oh, was yeah, great yeah, until yeah. injury. But this is the debate, right? This is the debate. Okay, you know, because I also want to talk about uh, a couple of other players that went there that – um, a late bloomers. We saw one last night. Uh, Winslow didn't he go? Where did he go? North Carolina. Uh, from the Heat. Uh huh. He went to Duke or North Carolina. He went to Duke. He went to Duke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's a late bloomer, but he's starting to come around. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying about them reaching that superstar plateau. It's very rare. Jabari where they, Parker, where they where were superstars Parker in go? college. Yeah, where did you? Duke. He Duke. Went to Duke. He went to Duke. And now where is he? Yeah. So if we did it in reverse order and we say, okay, let's name the best players to come out of Duke. So we got Jabari, we got Grant Hill. Where do we go from there? Is that the end? Kyrie. Kyrie. Okay, and then what? Mm -hmm. And I, then Jabari really, due to injury, hasn't panned out on the pro level yet. He was a number right. of what? One or two pick? Number two. Number, number two, two pick. And while healthy, he demonstrated oh, that while he While healthy, he, uh -huh. was, he had the stats and the numbers. Uh -huh. um, so injuries have, have uh, dealt him a, a pretty bad hand. Which is the same thing it did with um, Grant Hill. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I, I believe had Grand Hill not been injured, we might have been having him in that whole GOAT conversation. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No doubt. He's but a the, Hall of Famer with the injuries. But my exactly. question is, again, choose you this. Do you think, because there's a system here that God was, there's a system of life mm -hmm. and there's a system of death. Do you think that Duke is a system of death or life? Not saying that, but I'm talking about for the next level of their career. Because if you look at a Kentucky, right, where their players not only come into the league, but stay in the league and become mm -hmm. superstars. UCLA. In the league. Mm -hmm. So you got different systems that's designed to Arizona. have players be great on the next yeah. level. Yes. Yes. I, I'm still trying to figure out, if, <laughs> if, is that Duke's system? I think, I think now it, it is, when we look at the Duke, system, the Duke program, the Duke legacy of the last three to five years in particular, it is more toward 
it's more geared toward attracting players who will have a better chance of having a strong NBA career than yesteryear. The players that you name, no argument here. The history, the preponderance of their players have had storied college careers, get to the pros, flame out. They are very underwhelming, with a few exceptions, Kyrie, Grant, et cetera, like we've talked about. I think, though, about four years ago or so, Mike Krzyzewski, the coach, was criticizing John Calipari, even back when he was with, you know, Memphis, in getting players one and done, and this is, you know, a travesty to college basketball, is messing up the tradition and college education, amateur athletics, blah, blah, blah. But we see that he has now had to conform. Yes. Because to be competitive, you right. have to get the best. Right. And some of the best are guys that arguably could, you know, come straight out of high school and go to the league. Due to and, the rules, and, they and, can't But do that. for the rule, yeah. they can't do that. And in every other sport, be it uh, tennis, Pete Sampras didn't go to high school. He dropped out to play professional tennis. Hockey has guys that can go straight into hockey. Baseball has prospects all the time. They say, man, screw college. I'm going to the league if I can get a rookie contract as a 17 or 18 year old. It is the NFL and the NBA that have had this sort of restriction on players. And at top universities, it's unfortunately been disproportionately African Americans. But we know the history of America has had some marginalization and disenfranchisement of African Americans. Well, that ain't nothing new. This is just a new form of it. But back to your point about Zion Williamson, I think that with this new philosophy that uh, Coach Krzyzewski has, this revelation that, wait a minute, man, this one and done thing might not be that bad if I want to stay relevant as a top tier blue chip college program. I got to get them. If I only have them for one year, so be it. So I think with Zion, just like the Grant Hills, the Kyrie Irvins, when you have a, a, a singular, quote unquote, special talent, a guy, a once in a generation kind of player, which is who I think he is based on what I've been able to see of him, I think that he will be able with his skill set to override the, let's say, curse of Duke and not be a flop in the NBA because he is phenomenal. And watching his high school stats, some of the knock against him was, well, hey, you're bigger than everybody. You're such, you know, a man amongst boys and the high school level, that's nothing. Wait till you get to college, we'll see what you really have. And coming into the season and early in the first maybe five, 10 games, people were giving RJ Barrett, his teammate, another likely lottery pick, number two in the draft probably, as the best player on that team. But now nobody is saying that. And they're not saying that because they've been watching Zion do what Zion does. And I think he's demonstrated that, hey, man, put me on the court with whatever the best competition is, be it high school, college, and when I get to the pros, the pros, I'm going to show that not only do I belong, but I'm one of the elite players there. I think it's a combination of size, a skill set, not a pure jump shooter, but adequate enough to hit the J. I don't cringe when he's shooting the jumper like, no, don't shoot it, take it inside. I think that he has enough of a skill set mix that lends itself good to the NBA game. And with teams scoring 120, 130 game, points a game now, nobody's playing defense, I think he might be phenomenal in the NBA based on his personal skill set despite going to Duke. Okay, let's, let's take that to, to, the, uh, to the lab. Mm -hmm. And let's look at if we put this in the That's lab, we, we, we put it under a microscope, mm -hmm. you know, and we look at it. Who was the one and two pick that came out of college last year? Who was one and two? Uh, Bagley mm -hmm. and um, I, Ian Ian from Phoenix. What's his name? Uh, uh, the, the center dude. Right. Got right. you. Two. Top, everybody said they were dominating. They were one and done players. And they got to the NBA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and guess what? They still need some work. Right. You see flashes of it. You mm -hmm. see glimpses of it. Yeah. But they didn't come into the NBA and look anywhere near like they were looking when they were playing in college. Right. I would agree. So, so, and then if you go back the year before that, mm -hmm. um, you got the kid um, from Los Angeles uh, who, who was a number one pick. You got Ball who was a number two yeah. pick. And they were doing all of these things in college. Mm -hmm. And when they got to the pros, guess what? The likes of Dwayne Wade and Kyrie Irving, and, mm -hmm. and they were waiting on them. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They weren't really ready as we predicted them to be. Now, granted, it's marketing, it's promotion, 
you know, it's all kinds of people that's making money off these images and these people. So you got to, you know, you got to say this, that, that, uh, that they're going to be as great as they are because we're trying to sell things. But I'm saying that um, Zion Williamson, I think in the NBA, he is not a franchise player. He is not a player that you can build your franchise around. He's going to be a Robin. He's not going to be a Batman. But guess what? Robins go to the Hall of Fame also. <laughs> they go to the All Star. So I don't, I don't see him. And don't get me wrong. That's a great, stellar professional career he's going to have. Mm -hmm. But I don't see anybody building their franchise around a Zion Williamson. I just don't see that. Do you see any semblance of him being anywhere near uh, LeBron James type talent? I think he can, but right now, for me, I need to see him get in better physical shape. He's a little heavy, mm -hmm. if you ask me. And because of that, he can play ping, um, um, pinball in college and bump people and move them all around. Yeah. But it's a lot of people in the NBA that's just as big, just as strong, just as athletic that are uh, bench players. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to be able to just uh, come into the NBA and play like he Godzilla going through uh, Tokyo. He's not going to be able to right. do that because there are people in the NBA who job it is to contain individuals like him. That's what they're right. on the payroll for. Right. So it's a whole different thing, college to pro. So is he going to be good? Is he going to be a great? Will he have a chance to be a Hall of Famer? Yes, the young man is extremely talented, and he's a great skill, got great skill set. Um, he has a good head on his shoulders from what I can see. Mm -hmm. But I don't see him being a franchise uh, basketball player in the NBA. For me, for me, let's just... And it's unfair to really compare him to LeBron. And the only reason we're doing that is because of his size. Mm -hmm. It's not because of his skill set. And skill set, too. I, 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 I don't mean. think he, from what I've seen, he, he does not have the greatest of handles to create his own shot like the league does. Like the league huh? does. Because league, majority of your moves are one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and it's about shooting in the league right. now. Yeah. He doesn't have a jump shot to make you respect it enough. Mm -hmm. It's It's... And most of the shots, like I said, have been more set shots versus crossing somebody up, raising up, and shooting. Now, mm -hmm. don't get me le wrong, LeBron really didn't have that, that well when he came in. Right. He did develop it. But I also don't see him as being a great passer. Okay. Um, there's so many things. And again, don't get me wrong, this isn't a pick him apart. Thing. No, no, we, we, because we have he's an amazing discussion. Right. Young, the young man is 18. Right. He's 18. Uh -huh. He's a kid. Great. Yeah, and I agree. All of us got kids older than him. Right. <laughs> right. right. He's going to be a very good talent, mm -hmm. but I'm on Will's side of things. I'm not looking at him as we're going to build our team around him because I don't see him being the type of player that if we need to get 10 points, Mm -hmm. Like LeBron did in, in the playoffs against uh, Detroit when he pretty much dismantled them himself. Mm -hmm. I don't see Zion being able to do that kind. Of, so to compare him to LeBron, I say not. I think he's more of a Karl Malone than, mm -hmm. a, than a LeBron. That, that if you leave me open, I can hit the shot. I'm great off a of pick and roll. Mm -hmm. That type of... As long as I'm in the lane, I got you. Yeah. I, I, I believe he could be a great mid-range game type guy. Mm -hmm. But that long range to stretch the defense, I don't think he's that dude. I think that, and I, 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 I respect that, and you make excellent arguments, both you and Will. I just disagree from the standpoint that even if he is, let's say, a Carl Malone type player, that makes him not a bust coming out of, you know, Duke. He is a top 50 player. No, neither, neither one of uh, us all, is saying he's going to be a bust. Uh, uh, he's not got going you. to be a bust. <laughs> no, 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 got no, you. no. And I think the comparison to LeBron for me is it's a similar skill set in terms of size, in terms of girth, and in terms of developable skill set from even where he is right now. LeBron came straight out of high school. His first game in the NBA he had 25 and 9 as an 18 year old kid coming from high school to where these grown men play and I think that Zion has a similar type of skill set mix and I think his personal disposition you know not knowing him personally just looking at you know how he gets down how he carries himself seems to be one that's willing 
to learn as well. So if he comes up against competition and says, you know what, what used to work for me won't work anymore because this is a greater level of competition, I think he can go back to his lab and tweak whatever needs to be tweaked to go ahead and getting back to the place where he can have some semblance of dominance. I look at a player like Giannis, who is unusual that coming out didn't seem like he was, was going to be. 13 pick, 13 pick maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, coming out, it was like, okay, now what, the, what is this guy going to do? But based on just sheer athleticism, grit and desire yeah, has turned himself into an MVP candidate. And let's, I think let's that, just go ahead and get a man MVP. This, this, it's this, 14 <laughs> games left. Giannis is the MVP. He, he, right, MVP. Let's, stop I, this, I, let's stop these charades. No, no, no argument here. Matter no of argument fact, here. if you saw the game last night and the Bucks was down by 20 at <laughs> halftime and won by 15, Giannis is not playing. He came to burn the town to the ground. That's what he came to do. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that Zion Williamson, aside from you know the hype, and because hype is it, hype is hype. And I'm I'm just going based on what I'm looking at, aside from the hype. And I wish he wouldn't have gone to Duke so the whole Duke, whatever is attributed to Duke, wouldn't be on him having to deal with stuff. But based on his mix of size, attitude, athleticism, his bounce, I, I see him as uh, I'd be willing to build a team around him. Well, I, you know? I, would, I would like to see him amongst his peers. Mm -hmm. When I look at college basketball right now, there's no one else like Zion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's nobody else like Zion. Yeah. I remember a U, a UNLV had a kid, Bennett, a couple of years back that Michael Jordan drafted number one in Charlotte. Yeah, He played just like Zion. He was killing people. He was big, going through, just making his way, doing all that. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and um, Charlotte took him with the number one pick. I remember And him. he bounced mm -hmm. around and bounced out of the league. Now, I'm saying I will bet the farm that mm -hmm. that's not going to happen to Zion. Zion is a talented individual. Like you said, he looks like a hard worker, a coachable individual. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to have an extremely successful season. All of the things that we say that he need work on is all of the things that many NBA Hall of Famers needed work on when they came into the league. Mm -hmm. You know, Jason Kidd is one of the top three-point shooters in the history of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Picture that. Right. Didn't I have mean, a they, shot they, at they, all. They, hey, when he in. first came in, they used to call him Ace and Kidd because he didn't have no J. <laughs> 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 they used to call him Ace and Kidd. He, why? Because he ain't got no J. <laughs> Ace <Asa. laughs> <laughs> hey, Coach, Coach Kid, let me wink at you. Right. <laughs> but, but, Still got love for you, Doc. Still he, got love for you. But he developed, and I'm saying that's going to happen with Zion. One of the things that's going to be key for the success and, and the way Zion is going to um, – um, his career is going to go in the NBA is what team he goes to mm -hmm. and Sister. what coach that he has in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now, if he goes to a Papa bitch, somebody who got staying power, somebody who can check you, and can't get you fired, okay, then he has a better chance of getting the tutelage he needs to improve his game. But if he go to a team where they're going to get a new coach every three years, and mm -hmm. you know, there's some guys in the league haven't played for the same coach two years in a row. Wow. You know, so wow. those type of things play into it. So I would say right now, looking at Zion, I would like to see Zion on a, a, a team probably like, um, I would like to see Zion go to a team like, the Atlanta Hawks. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a perfect fit for him. Okay. With what they got and what they're building. And uh, Zion Williams, young, they got a great coach in Atlanta. I would like to see him go to a team like that. Now, if he goes to uh, um, New Orleans, mm -hmm. they got a good coach, but they have unstable front yeah, office. Right. And guess what? The odds are he could go to New York, mm -hmm. which has had some problems in the past. And they got the heavy media. So all of this, all of this is going to play on his development. But by no means is he going to be a bust. He's going to right. be a – I think he'll be um, a candidate for the Hall of Fame one day in his career. Yeah. You know, I, to a certain extent, I pray that he doesn't go to New York. Because when you got your top players leaving, mm -hmm. like, yeah. listen, I didn't even play for a year – for you a year. And I don't want to play for you another one. And free agents not going there. Right. And, and that's, that's a lot to say about how bad the culture has gotten in New York. Yes, it is. You know, I even think about, I don't think he'd do well in Washington. 
because of that system. I think his skill set will be best with a team that's running and gunning, which as bad as they look, maybe a Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I thought Sacramento. Maybe maybe a Phoenix, because they run and gun. And they and they're they're young and they're up and coming and right. they have an outstanding coach also. Mm -hmm. Right. That's why you see them getting some wins at the end of the season against I would, some really right, tough teams. Right. Yeah. I would like to see them yeah. up under somebody like Nate McMillan. That would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Somebody up. Indiana would Nate. be perfect if he went mm -hmm. to Indiana. Yeah. That would be perfect for him. Gotcha. Perfect place for him would be Indiana. Because mm -hmm. I believe Nate could pull out the best in who he is. Yeah. And he has enough veterans around him that would could get him to the next level. Right, you don't have to carry the load. No, mm -hmm. he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think what's sad about it is whatever team he goes to is that bad that he's going to have to be the load carrier. Well, it depends. There's some, yeah. there's some terrible teams that's on, that's – uh, on the borderline that's in the lottery. Yeah. You know, that's you, it's some teams, you know, like we talked about Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Sacramento could end up being a lottery team. Mm. Right. Those teams are on the brink. Yeah. What They're about the L.A., the Lakers? The Lakers. Mm -hmm. The Lakers. Well, Magic was at one of the uh, ACC tournament games. Yeah. You know, scouting it out. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me ask this question because I've, I've been seeing this. Guys who are used to winning, a LeBron, used to winning on the high school level, came into the league, I'm used to winning here. Mm -hmm. Now he's on a team that he like, I don't know when we're going to win. Mm. Does that do something for your psyche? Because I think about how, what it did for Okafor, mm -hmm. that he went to, what, was, what team did he go to? Went to Philly. 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 Mm -hmm. and just lost himself, mm -hmm. lost confidence, and now... He didn't go to Duke, did he? <laughs> We're not yes, going to talk did. about that. <laughs> did he go to Duke? Yes, he did. Oh, wow. wow. And so now you're... Can Zion handle maybe being on a losing team and still so. be able to will them mm -hmm. to win? Or will he fall into that culture... Mm -hmm. and may need to be traded to become Zion. No, I, th I, th I think that two things. Yes, I think he can go to whatever environment he goes into, be it a, a utopia, you know, or the a, 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 a barrio, he's going to be able to shine and, and do his thing. I think that is due in part to, I think character counts. He as an individual seems like he's a pretty good kid and is able to separate, hey, this is a, a team sport, I want to help the team win, but if I do all I can do and we still are losing, I can't do much more about that, and I won't hang my head and go into a manic depressive state because of it either. I think even in LeBron's case, LeBron is a seasoned veteran. He's 34 years old. Now you're a grown man with kids. He's at a place now where he's trying to secure legacy, and I think part of why him going to L.A., knowing that this year, if there was one year out of the four, that could be a throwaway possibility. It was his first year because they put together a ragtag group of one-year contract guys, almost not too much above a YMCA pickup game team, and said, let's just roll the dice. We know the West is tougher than the East. You went to eight straight finals in the East. This is going to be a different ball game. Let's just see if you can pull a rabbit out of your hat. LeBron is still averaging close to 30 points a game, close to 10 rebounds a game, close to several assists. And had he not missed a month with that groin injury, which they was were in significant. They place when he they, left. You know what I'm saying? In they, the West. They, correct. So they would have been a playoff team. And from there to now, some more chemistry, camaraderie would have grown, excitement, et cetera. So – I think that L.A. is going to be fine and LeBron will be fine. With Zion, I don't think that he's caught up in all of the hype. And I think that's important because I don't think that he feels the pressure oh, of no. having to, no. I got to save the no. world or no. else my life is over. No. He ain't feeling no. that. I'm just no. playing basketball. No. I'm a basketball player. No. And what happens, happens, and that's because if he's, he's grounded. Now, if he gets with a great team, an ideal situation like Indiana or Coach Popovich, like we talked about, that would be icing on the cake, some extra cheese. But I think when he gets to the league itself, coming from where he's come from, it's like, man, I'm in the NBA. I appreciate that, this opportunity. Let me make the most of it, regardless of what team I'm 
complain for because I'm not a prima donna and I didn't come in here with a savior complex. Well, well let me just say this. This is the good thing for Zion Williamson. Mm -hmm. This sounds like an oxymoron, but these are the best lottery teams the NBA has had <laughs> in a long time. Say it. These are some very good lottery Say teams. Say it. You know, these are some very good lottery teams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would say outside of Memphis, um, the rest of the teams may be okay for him. Yeah. Yeah, outside of Memphis. But the rest of the teams might be a good place for him to be. Gotcha. Now, we're talking about systems. Let me ask a question. You as parents, mm -hmm. your child, you know, is the number one player in the nation. And he has an opportunity to go to any school he wants to. What school would you choose? <laughs> UCLA. UCLA. I would say I would send my I would I would if 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 I, I have a son, I have a son in high school right now, and, and I'm hoping that he get a college scholarship. I would love UCLA, but if he get one to Sister Ann School of the Blind, I'm fine with that <laughs> as long as I ain't got to pay. <laughs> but but but, but um, right. if I could pick the school that my son would go to. I would pick UCLA. That's a good pick. I would probably pick a school in Florida. I don't really have, you know, which, which sport? Basketball? Basketball. 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 Well, you uh, pick the sport. That's, that's, you pick the that's, sport. That's, that's tough. In, 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 in football, I would have to go with probably either Clemson or Alabama. Right. One of those two. Basketball, I mean, I don't really like Duke, but that's a solid choice, too. Yeah. Well, I, what, 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 what about you? I think if it was for me, I would have my, my son under Coach Calipari. Yeah. Because, that was my second because choice. Because his, he's proven that not only that can I get you choice. to the league, and I'm coaching you like you're going to the league, right. mm -hmm. but once you get there, what I'm teaching you now will yeah, sustain you there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I changed that, my pick what? to Kentucky. I changed I would my go pick there. to yeah, Kentucky, too. I'm going to Kentucky, too. I, seen, yeah. I changed my pick to Kentucky. Yeah, I saw a, a documentary on him, and they were talking. Because I, I, was, I, was, I was mad at Kyler Perry for a minute because I thought the Memphis team that he had with Derrick Rose, uh, they, they should have won some championships, at least that one that they, they went to Derrick Rose's freshman year. They went over to Kentucky. They've had arguably the best teams in college basketball for three or four seasons and couldn't get it done. But in the documentary, it talked about how he really stayed with the players as young men. You know, the off the court stuff. Like, nah, man, you got a chance to do this, that, and the other. I'm going to help keep you on a straight and narrow, and I'm going to work as best I can to ensure that your future is secured. So when a person is taking on that type of mentality for your son, my son, acting like he's his son, knowing what fathers bring to the table as a father, I got to respect that. So I would probably have to go with Kentucky, yeah. too, on the it's basketball unanimous. tip. It's yeah. Unanimous. Well, wow. What a great show. Hopefully it sparks some debate in you at home or at the you know, wherever you are, at the barber shop, wherever you go in the car, at work, whatever. You just experienced Into His Court. I'm your man, P. Skip. We'll see you same time next week, 7 to 7.30, Joy 1340 AM, 98.7 FM, on the number one Christian radio station in the state. Till next week, have an amazing week. Peace.